Section 4.3, the coefficient of determination. So let's look at a question. In the Mustang problem, was the regression useful or could we have done just as well by neglecting age and using the average cost for predictions? So let me kind of throw a scenario out in front of you that you have seen the prices of 12 randomly selected Mustang GT convertibles. And then somebody says, I'm going to now pick a 13th one and I want you to guess how much that one's going to cost. What would be your strategy for guessing the cost? Well, it turns out if all you knew was the prices of those first 12 and you wanted to minimize the amount of error in your guess for the 13th one, that the smartest guess would be to do the average. So when we think about doing predictions and not having X values to help us out, but only having Y values like the prices, our smartest prediction is to predict the average price. So that's what this horizontal line right here represents, is the Y bar line, the average price. So one of the things we could do is we could think about it as plotting the ordered pairs and supposing that was the line we used to make the prediction. No matter whether the car was young or old, since we don't know the age, we would just guess this Y bar value then these vertical lines represent the errors that we get. Sometimes the average is a pretty good guess, but sometimes the average is pretty bad. So the error that's represented right there is y, the real y value minus the predicted y value, so it would be y minus y hat, or sorry, y bar. And if I was to, per, to kind of guess at that for this particular line, let's see, what do we think that is? This is 250, that's 300, maybe that height is 285. Minus, what is this line right here? That's 150, that's 200, maybe that's around 180. So I'd say the error there is about 105. And if we wanted to know how good this line was overall for fitting this data set, we would find those errors for every data point. We would square them, because these down here are gonna come out negative, and then we would add them up. And fortunately, all that work's been done for us already in the sum of the squared errors. So these y minus the y value minus the y bar errors squared and added up is 32,362.67. All right. So again, that's just a number. Good, bad, whatever. It's just a number. And what we want to do is say, okay, that's one way we can make predictions. No matter what the age of the car is, just always predict whatever the ad average price is from your data set. And then the regression idea says, well, maybe it would be better to think about the fact that older cars tend to cost less, come up with a regression line, and instead of just always guessing the average price, regardless of the age, let's plug the age in to our regression equation so that for the younger cars we guess higher, for the older cars we guess lower, and we should do better. And so then we still are going to have some errors, and the error in this case would be the actual y value minus whatever the prediction line is guessing. So that we estimated before that that y value is 185, or sorry, 285, so I'll stick with that. How about the y hat? Well, that's whatever this value is. You plug 2 into the equation, and you go up till you hit the line, you come over, and whatever that is, that would be our y hat. So a little below 250, maybe 245. And so then our error in that case is 40. So we can see just kind of comparing the two for that one point that we're doing better when we use regression. However, that's not always universally true. Like if you look at this point right here, that looks like a pretty small error when you use the Y bar. That same point has a bigger error when you use the Y hat. But overall, it looks like the errors have gotten smaller. So what we'd want to do is find the error for every one of these, square them to get rid of the negatives, and add them all up. And again, that's already been done for us, which is nice because there's a bunch of points. So it would be tedious work. But the sum of the squared errors when you're using regression is 7,049.38. So what was better, using the average line or using the regression line? And the answer is whichever one had the smaller sum of squared errors and the sum of squared errors for the average was 32,000 and the sum of the squared errors for regression was 7,000 roughly. So that seems a lot better. All right, but then how much better? So one thing that you could do is you could just subtract. You could say, all right, so if I use the average, the error was 32,362. 
5.67 and when I did it with the regression the average was 7049.38 and then you could do the difference and let's see what we get there actually I'm not going to do the difference on calculator yet but it's roughly 25,000 just imagine 32,000 minus 7,000 it's about 25,000 so I just want to think about this question. If you're in a situation where there's error and if you got rid of 25,000, is that good? And I guess anytime you get rid of error, that's good. But I mean, is that really useful to get rid of 25,000? So imagine this. Imagine that you, um, you graduate from college and you owe $32,000 in student loans. And somebody pays off 25,000 of that for you as a gift. And so now you only owe 7000 So if somebody got rid of that $25,000 of debt for you, is it a big deal? I would argue that if you owe 32000 somebody paid off 25000 That is incredibly helpful. On the other hand, at the time I'm making this video, I think the United States is like $19.5 trillion in debt. So what if somebody paid off $25,000 of that for us? Then roughly how much would we be in debt? I would say the answer is then we'd roughly be $19.5 trillion in debt. That $25,000 is almost nothing. So when you think about, is that a lot of error to remove? You have to think about how much error you started with. So when we think about that debt situation, Sony pays off $25,000 at $32,000. That's a huge deal. And if they pay off $25,000 out of $19.5 trillion, it's not much at all. So the way we take into account how much the original amount of error was or debt in the other situation, is we divide by that because then we're thinking of it as what percentage of the error or debt goes away. So 25,000, but 25,000 out of what? 25,000 out of 32,000. So let's look at that on the calculator. So in the top, 32,362.67 minus 7,049.38. That's that 25,000 type number. Put it in parentheses to make sure that that subtraction happens before the division. And when we divide that, that's going to be a decimal form of the percentage. So that would be 0.7822, or if we did go to a percentage, 78.22%. Now, going back to that main question, when we were looking at Mustangs, was it useful to use regression? I would argue yes, definitely, because by using linear regression to make our predictions, instead of just using the average price, regardless of age, we're reducing our squared error by 78.22%, and that's a huge amount of error to go away. To get rid of any amount of error is good. To get rid of 78.22% of our error is kind of incredible. All right, let's go ahead and look at one more quick example here on this application of comparing regression as a best fit to just using the average line. So if I click on mean lines, it'll draw the Y bar line in for this data set. And if I click on show errors, it'll give me the sum of the squared errors for this line as a fit to this data. And it's coming up 40 point, let's just call that 813. I'm going to go ahead and put that into the calculator. So let me bring that in for a moment. So open parentheses 40.813. And then I want to subtract whatever the amount of error is if I use regression so that I can see the removed error as the difference. So I move that out of the way. And we can go ahead and add the regression line in. So we're going to get this upward slant because of the pattern to our data and the sum of the squared errors when we have regression is 6.696, if I rounded that to the same number of decimal places. So let's bring that in, 6.696. So this was the error that I had from using the Y bar line. This is the error, sum of squared error that I get when I use regression line. The difference is how much error was removed when I switched from this method to this method. And then if I divide that by the amount that I started with when I was using the average, I would be computing the percent reduction in squared error. So if I click on enter right there, I get 0.8359 or about 83.59% reduction in squared error when I use linear regression rather than the average Y value to make my predictions. 
and then I can click over here on calculate R and R squared and it will show the R squared and there's that 83.59 that we just calculated. Okay, so that's just one more look at the idea of what is R squared doing, taking the error if you were the sum of the squared error if you were to use the average y value line, subtract the amount of error if used regression, that difference is how much error re was removed by switching to regression from that method, divide by the error you started with, and there's your percent reduction in squared error. All right, so let's get back to the notes. All right, so here's the formula for what we just did on the previous page with the Mustangs. It's for something called the coefficient of determination, or R squared. And to get R squared, you look at how much error are you removing when you use regression instead of using the average, and divide it by the original amount of squared error you had when you used the average. The formula looks fairly intimidating, but it is what we just did. Take the squared errors from using the average, subtract the squared errors you get when you do regression, that difference is how much error is removed, and then divide it by the squared errors when using the average. And it turns out you don't have to worry about how scary that formula looks because we're primarily going to calculate that using our calculator. So let's focus on the interpretation here for a bit. What does R squared represent? So R squared represents the percent reduction in squared error when we do what? When we make the predictions of the y value by using the x value in the regression equation rather than just always guessing the average y value. Oops, sorry, when we make predictions of the, this should say y value, by using the x value in the regression equation rather than just always guessing the average y value. So we're always trying to predict the Y value in the Mustang example, that would be the price, but how do we do it? Uh, if we use the regression equation, we're gonna plug the X value into that equation to get our Y value that way. The other option is just to use the average Y value regardless of what age the car is. So R squared tells us what percent reduction in squared error we get when we switch from the method of using the average to the method of using the regression equation. A few notes about R squared. R squared always ends up between zero and one. The best you could ever hope for is to get rid of 100% of your squared error, which is what the one represents. The zero is kind of good news because it says that using regression never makes things worse overall because you don't get a negative reduction in squared error, which would mean the error gets worse. So at worst case, um, things don't get better. And best case, all of your error disappears. So if R squared is near zero, then we say that we fear that the regression is not useful. And if R squared is near one, then the regression is very useful. And everything in between is some level in between. The closer you are to one, the more useful it is. The closer to zero you are, the less useful it is. A little bit of a strange word here that we talk about fear. But the reason we say that, if R squared is near zero, then we fear the regression is not useful. Let's say R squared was 0.05. So that means that by using regression, we're getting rid of 5% of our squared prediction error. So wouldn't that be useful? I mean, would you rather keep all your error or get rid of 5%? I think you would rather get rid of 5%. So why do we say we fear that it's not useful? Well, because we're getting our R squared from sample data. So what we're saying is if in the sample data, it looks like regression is a tiny bit useful, it could turn out that when you apply it to the population, it's not useful at all. It might be a tiny bit useful there, or it might not be useful, we can't tell. What we're really saying is we don't know if the reason we're getting something above zero is because regression is helpful, or if it was just random variation in the sample we took. All right, so let's try and apply that to the Mustangs. Uh, we've already calculated that on the previous page, but I'll show you how to calculate it on your calculator here. And then the other thing we'll do is interpret it because we hadn't done that before. All right, so here's that age and price data again, and they want us to compute the coefficient of determination R squared. All right, so the first step in that process would be to put all of this data into our calculator. So we'd want to go into stat and edit. And I've done that already just to speed things up a little bit. If you want to follow along, just pause the video and enter the data yourself real quick. But there's our data, and now to see R squared, we're just going to do the same process we did earlier for regression. So I'm going to press the stat key, 
and I'm going to go to calc. I go to number eight, which is that stat style regression where the slope is the second term. I'm going to tell the calculator where my data is, L1, comma, L2. Now I'm just going to press enter, and we're going to see stuff that we saw before. We're going to see our intercept, we're going to see our slope, but th here's this R squared and R, and we now know what the R squared is. It represents the coefficient of determination. So my R squared is approximately 0 0.7822. So that's pretty good news. The calculator just throws that number in sort of for free. The bad news there is you might be looking at your calculator screen right now and not seeing that. And if you haven't tried it on your calculator yet, please pause the video and try it to see if the R squared and R show up or not. If they don't, it's because you need to do something um, in the calculator called turning on the diagnostics for stat. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So the first thing we need to do is go into our catalog, which is down here above the zero key. So if you, since that's in blue, I'm going to hit the second key and then catalog. Now let me pull back to the screen again. What you'll see here is a list of everything your calculator can do, and it's alphabetical. So I'm just holding the down arrow key down, scrolling through there, looking for diagnostic on, and there it is. So when I get that little arrow wedge pointing at diagnostic on, I'm going to press enter. That'll paste it onto the home screen. I press enter again and that says done. And what that does, it throws an internal switch on your calculator that kind of lets it know that you know how to deal with this R and R squared number. We only know R squared for now, but R is coming. And because you're asking for that from now on, it'll show R and R squared. So even if a moment ago your calculator did not show them, if you hit second enter twice, you should get back to your linear regression statement. And if you press enter, now the R squared and the R should show up. It's not something you have to do every time you do a problem. It's just a switch you throw once. And unless you reset the calculator's memory or go in there and do diagnostic off, it's going to stay on. And so from now on, you'll see it R and R squared when you do regressions. All right, now in terms of interpreting it, uh, we want to use this idea that it represents the percent reduction in squared error. So I'm going to say we get a 78.22 percent reduction in squared error. And how are we getting that? When we predict the, up here it says y value, but what is the y value on this problem? It would be the price. So when we predict the price of this type of Mustang by using the, up here it says x value, but in this example, the x value is age. So by using the age of the car in the regression equation, rather than just always using the average y value, it says up there. So we'll change that to the average price down here. Okay, so now we filled in all those blanks. Let's try and get a smooth reading of that. We get a 78.22% reduction in squared error when we predict the price of this type of Mustang by using the age of the car in the regression equation rather than just always using the average price of the cars as our prediction. So how useful was that? And I would say something like, very useful. And this is going to be a little repetitive of what we already said, but why, why was it very useful? Because we removed 78.22% of the squared prediction errors. There's no specific thing I'm looking for right here, but we're closer to one than zero, so this feels very useful. If that had been 28.22%, I would have said it's kind of useful because we removed 28.22% of the squared prediction errors, right? If it was 98.22%, I'd say, wow, that's extremely useful, right? But it's not like you have to memorize these words. You just have to have this idea that the closer you are to 100%, the more useful it is. The closer you are to zero, the more worried you are that it's not useful at all. Just the last thing to point out, when they say how useful was it, you're going to talk about something kind of like this, but it can be a little bit looser, a little briefer. If they say to interpret R squared, then you need to do the full thing with all the pieces there. I would suggest, because this is a little tricky to do, that on your first couple homework problems, you have this example in front of you, so that you're just trying to make tweaks and make it fit the problem you're doing, and then when you're doing the last few, hopefully you can do it without looking at an example to go off of. All right, that wraps up this section.